I used to recoil when people equated sleeping in to waking up any time before 9 a.m. It always felt a little smug, too. Congratulations, you bright morning creature. Please fascinate us with your productive routine while the rest of us slobs waste our lives away. Now that the bakery requires a 3 a.m. rise from me, I sheepishly admit that on weekends my eyes pop open at 5.45 and I am a new woman. When we are no longer putting in 70 hours a week, I will still wake up before the sun, if for nothing more than to putter. I miss puttering. I miss endless days of fussing over houseplants and rearranging books. I miss going to the thrift store, finding a vase, and filling it with flowers. I miss working on the dollhouse, making pasta, reading books, and organizing drawers. There are no drawers at the bakery, though lots of things need organizing despite the lack of time to do it. I find myself longing for the stage to be over quickly, to be at the place where we're looking back fondly. In all honesty, I do not feel fond right now about any of this, but that is the exhaustion speaking. This too shall pass, and when it does, I will mourn it the way I'm currently mourning our old lives in LA. I will wish that for a moment I could be back in this kitchen with Chase listening to the 70s folk that transports my heart to Ojai while my hands are here in Visalia, egg-washing croissants. To my great relief, we recently hired another baker who is now assuming egg-washing duties as I transition to bread. Eventually, someone will claim that role as well, and I'll be phased out of the kitchen as a series regular. Until then, there are now three of us, and as predicted, I am in a period of mourning over the time that was once ours alone. It was only four months, but we'd just gotten over the grueling hump of not having a clue what we were doing and settling into the ballet of two bakers collaborating. We'd gotten to know each other's bakes, one of us responding to a timer that was set by the other. I know that if the buzzer sounds and there are muffins in the oven at 400 degrees, the temperature must be lowered to 350 and the timer reset for 15 minutes, just as Chase knows that the croissants must bake for another five minutes at 340 after their initial 10 at 380. And in between it all, a song will catch me off guard, or the burnout sets in, and I will cry, and he will set down a whisk to comfort me. We'll laugh and vent and brainstorm together, and in light of all of that, despite how bad our feet ache and how heavy our eyes are, despite the nagging kink on the left side of my neck and Chase's back spasms, I realize that the season is so special just in time to see it turn and fade away. It's strange how quickly we evolve. When we first opened in December, there were maybe six items we struggled to get out every morning by seven. My poor mother-in-law was our first and longest standing employee, and she'd just stare through the pass at us in horror as customers eagerly filed in with only a batch of muffins and some bagels in the display case. Just tell them we're still baking, I'd snap as though it were a perfectly reasonable explanation. Welcome to Bread Savage, where we open when we're not ready and it's your own fault for coming in so early. Wait till 7.30 if you want more options or 8 if we've gotten a late start. But don't come after 10 because we'll probably be sold out by then. I found myself belly laughing the other night looking through photos of these first days. At the time, these thoughts seemed perfectly rational, and to be honest, we couldn't have done any better. We've given every ounce of ourselves to this shop from the very start, and the reality is, we were just in over our heads. But as time wore on, we learned that we'd have to start baking at 4 a.m. instead of 5. We naturally became more efficient at batching recipes and multitasking, I now laminate and cut almost 200 pastries a day, in contrast to the 30 I struggled with at the start. We've increased quantities without sacrificing quality, and finally one day, I looked up and realized that I knew what I was doing. I remember struggling with tasks that I fly through now, and it's hard to remember why they were so challenging. I once heard that after you learn how to do something, it's difficult to remember the time before. She's Louise, is that accurate? As I teach these techniques to our new staff, I am learning how to be patient, trying so desperately to remember how frustrating it was to shape those first baguettes. Luckily, I have photographic evidence to keep me humble. 
And now, when my mother-in-law arrives to open at 6.30 on a Tuesday, we have racks full of pastries ready to go out. Coffee is brewed, and the people that come in at 7 get first dibs on specialty items that still sell out early, but are accompanied by a dozen other options and joined by a variety of bread in the afternoon. We're still working 10-hour days, 13 when employees call in sick, and the challenge of easing ourselves into a more sustainable schedule remains an elusive goal. I look forward to the time that we no longer eat out every day. However, there are some things so satisfying that we fail to tire of them. When we look back at this chapter, we will remember this as the year of Canton's war wonton soup in bed. The year we fell asleep when the sun was still out, drifting away to the lull of supernatural playing on the TV. The year I finally learned to invest in quality shoes and discovered that outsourcing our laundry is one of the best acts of self-care. It will be remembered as the year we reconnected with the Darwins and learned to collaborate with business partners. The year that held up a mirror to who I have become thus far and asked if I was satisfied with the reflection. Even if we don't build an empire to contend with institutions like Tartine and La Brea Bakery, we will have embarked on an adventure that forced us to be a little better than who we were before, and I think that's certainly worth a few sleepless nights. <laughs> she writes on a Sunday morning after catching up on her sleep deficit.